what's up? My name is Rick Merckx and I'm a content conversion specialist at Dimenco. In this first tutorial, we're going to give you a quick overview of the Adapt software. Now, before I'm going to start a project, let me first explain the most important functionality of Adapt and the easiness of use. Nowadays, more and more 3D products are being introduced into the market. One of the remaining challenges is the availability of content and the possibility to use existing 2D content in 3D. Adapt software allows you to convert existing 2D content into stereo 3D. It is based on the principle of using dead maps. Now, besides 2D to 3D conversions, Adapt is also an ideal tool to enhance and fix your stereo 3D footage. The main functionality of Adapt is creating these dead maps based on a semi-automated process. In case of stereo content, such dead maps can be generated automatically. When every frame is provided with a dead map, the project can then be exported to the 2D preset format. This format is used by multi-view displays. For this example, we demonstrate the conversion from 2D to stereo, in order to watch it on our 3D television. Alright, let's get started. Here I have opened a 2D sequence from the series Spartacus, and Adapt automatically detects shots when loading in a project. And this project is an image sequence as input file, but Adapt can also import AVI and WMV Windows Media formats. Uh, besides PNG sequence, it also supports TIFFs, TGA, and JPEG as well. So, autom Adapt automatically detects these shots. And in order to convert the sequence to 3D, I have to assign dead maps. By assigning dead maps, I have to create keyframes. Let me create two keyframes for this first sequence, which is a balcony scene with a slow camera movement. Let me create a keyframe for the last frame of the shot, which is, which is frame 45, and the first frame, which is frame 0. I'm doing this by pressing on the keyframe icon. And I already have created some dead maps. These dead maps are created in Photoshop. You can use whatever program you prefer, but Photoshop is really uh, the way to go, I think. So, open in Photoshop, I can now. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, tell you in detail about creating dead maps. I'm just going to tell you the quick functionality of it. So, I'm going to copy the first keyframe, which is this one. Ctrl C. In order to copy it, uh, right mouse, mouse click on the current frame, zero, and paste to annotation. And as you can see in the timeline, a dead map is provided. And within my layers window, I can now hide and unhide my dead map. So I can start rendering or generating dead maps right now with using the plugins. But to, in order to get the best quality, I really need to also create a dead map for the last frame. So let me just quickly jump onto that frame. So this is uh, the last frame of the show. And again, I already have created that one. Copy. And paste it in again by clicking on right click and clicking on paste to annotation. So now the magic is going to happen. Within every shot, I can apply different plugins. Now, I have different options, and I'll, I'm going to show you one, the most common one, which is from 2D, 2D Propagate Fast. So, it's in the shot settings uh, window, it says, settings have changed, please update the shot. Well, let's ju just do that then. Hit update render, and well, as you can see, uh, that is now generating in two passes, which the first pass is in red, and the second pass will be yellow, to provide me with the generated depths. So I'm just letting this load, and I'll see you in a few. Hey, welcome back. It took about one minute to render these dead maps out. As you can see, it did a pretty fine job. 
And I can see now uh, our, my shell is updated by uh, the light blue colors in my timeline instead of the purple ones in the next shell, which you are, we are going to do next. Um, so this indicates this shell is up to date and the message here is gone in the shell settings window. And let's now do the same process for the next shot. So the next shot is pretty long. It's, it's about 600 frames long. So what I am going to encounter is that, that I have to assign more keyframes. But before doing that, I need first to preview my result because I don't want to waste any time. So meaning I want first to apply depth a depth map to the first frame of the shot and the last frame, like we did with uh, the previous shot. So let's assign a new keyframe to frame 46. And scroll to the last frame of the shot, let's assign a keyframe for that as well. And now again, in my uh, PC folder, which by the way I created myself, just for keeping things organized, this is my projects folder. I'm not going to talk in depth about them and um, please uh, view other other tutorials on our website for that um, but this um, you can download uh, from our website so that's, that's not, not any not any problem so let's open frame 57 um, let's copy this frame Ctrl C scroll to 57 actually is 46 right okay so this one is blank and assigning depth to this frame wouldn't make any sense because it can't calculate any information from this frame right so in, in this case I choose to make a keyframe for this frame for this 57 so let's assign a keyframe for that and I uh, copy it and paste it on there so that's on there and now we go to do it for the last frame hit ctrl c selecting it first by clicking by the way on ctrl holding ctrl clicking on your uh, layer which will select it and pressing ctrl c and paste it in and let's render it with the same settings. You have different settings, but still using this one. And let's update this shot. All right, see you in a few. So here I have my rendered result. And in the meanwhile, I created some extra keyframes for this shot. Some quick manual corrections, which took me each about 10 to 15 minutes. So to preview this uh, on my 3D TV, I can go to view. 3D preview and if connected I can select my 3D TV from the drop down menu. Now within Adapt you, you have many possibilities to optimize the content. Now let's assume your client devices to convert the sequence for a larger screen or wants le less depth. That's for for instance for the first shot. I can change my amount of depth or my, my amount of parallax by going to the settings button clicking on that near the plugin and this will pop up a histogram in, the, in a new window i can change the amount of depth with these sliders so let's change it and pull it a little bit towards each other something like that and close it down and hit update render again and as you can see, immediately it starts updating the shot. Okay, that's going pretty fast. So with this done, I can now export my project by going to export. In the general tab, I can select stereo. Let's keep it on stereo. I can select my file format, Windows Media Video. Let's do that. Save, save, save it in my project folder. That's okay. And that's it. Okay. This will export my video. With the exporting finished, we can now play the video side by side using this window. We're going back to our project folder and play it from there. 
So that's it. We successfully converted the 2D video to 3D using Adept. The project files are of course available. Please try it yourself. Thanks for watching and please feel free to post a reply on this video. For any further questions, feel free to email me. Thanks again and see you next time.